Last week, we got our application up and running with an SMTP provider and sent out some test emails. That was pretty cool, but there was a problem. We were inserting our API key right into our code. In a test application, this is no big deal. In a real world application, it's a huge problem because it exposes your API keys and any other secrets you're working with to anyone with access to your GitHub repo, which could be anyone with an internet connection if your repo is not private. Even if your repo is private, it's still a pretty bad idea. So let's fix it. First, we'll need to talk about environment variables. Environment variables are variables that are stored in your development and or production environment and referenced by your application. They're a perfect place to store API keys and the like because they exist in the server environment but not in your code, which means they don't get checked into version control. Traditionally, setting environment variables has been a mild pain in the butt, involving shell configurations and other factors. Thankfully, in the JS world, we've got .env, which makes life extremely easy. If you've been working in JavaScript, particularly JS application development, for more than a few weeks, you've probably at least heard of a .env file. This simple text file is consumed by .env and transformed into environment variables that are accessible anywhere in your Node.js application. This, my friends, is awesome. Let's install it. Head for your contact form apps directory in a terminal or command prompt and type the following. npm install dash dash save .env. Let that do its thing, and then restart your server, as always preferably with Gnomon. And then head for your text editor. We need to initialize .env so that we can use it anywhere in our server. Open up app.js. This next part is complicated, but stay with me. At the very top of the file, add this line. Now save the file. OK, you're done. And also, I lied about this being complicated. That's all we had to do. We can now access .env variables anywhere in our Node app. Woohoohoo! Let's make a .env file. Put it at the top level, like app.js. If you're on a Mac, you might get a warning that files beginning with a period are typically system files and may not be displayed in, for example, Finder. Fortunately, we're not worried about looking at this file in anything but our text editor, which will show it, unless it's a bad text editor in which case you should probably use a good one instead. Just a thought. Moving on. Have you created the file? Good. Now add this code to it. Except, of course, you should use your actual values from the last tutorial for those two items rather than these made-up ones. Sorry to keep sort of shouting that, but I want to make sure that you guys suffer as few headaches as possible. By the way, it's accepted practice for environment variables to be in all caps. Cool? All right, save this file, and then open up slash routes slash api.js. Find these three lines near the top, and replace them with this code. Save the file. You'll note we don't have to do anything to get that process variable. That's because it's natively accessible anywhere within a node app. Sweet. One thing to note, if you change your .env file, you'll need to hard restart your server. Nodemon doesn't natively detect changes to that file. I'm going to do that right now. Anyway, this should work, but let's go ahead and change slash route slash contact.js and make the exact same change we just made. We can actually just copy and paste this from api.js. Grab these two lines and replace these three. Save that file, and we're set. We're ready to test. Flip over to localhost 3000 slash contact, refresh the page if it's been sitting there open since last week, and submit the form. Remember that you need to type in an approved email address or Mailgun will give you a success message but never actually send the email. You should get the same success message as last week when you submit. And we did. Oh, side note. If you're keeping this stuff in a repo and had GitHub generate a gitignore file, it probably already included .env files. But if not, you'll need to manually add the file to .gitignore. As you can see, ours already has it. Otherwise, you're still going to have the same problem of secrets ending up in your repo. That's it. We've created an app, built out a front end and a back end, got some validation working, got XHR working, got SMTP sending, and secured our secrets. Not a bad place to wrap up, since getting more complicated than this gets into I ought to just make a full course on it territory. 
Next week, we'll be back with something standalone and, I promise, a bit shorter than these last few not-so-quick hits. See you then.